And to wrap things up, I'm here with my man Jason. What up, Jason? Jim, they say X Men. They say X Men in the book. They do. They oh my say God. X Team, X Men. <laughs> only, took, only took five whole issues. The last page of the fifth issue, they say X Men. Well, I guess they had to say mutants first uh, in passing last issue so we could get the X Men, but this is, in fact, Ultimate X Men. Number five, it's written and art by Peach Momoko, script adaptation by Zach Davison, letters by VCs Travis Lanhan. And yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be the way that gets people like, oh, finally, uh, because it's still a lot of mis- mystery going on or whatever. But I, 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 I think I'm back on. I think I'm at least back yeah, it's in. it's going the right direction. There, there's no scenes in here. I'm like, is this really happening? Is it a dream? What order are things happening? That's what trip us a lot up. Tripped us up, up last time, besides trying to speak English. Yeah, yeah, exactly. it's hard. <laughs> yes, it is sometimes hard. It's hard to read as well, but this is, it's always a quick read. And when I was going through it, it's a quick read, but you have to reread it a couple of times, especially if you're going to talk about it, because there's a lot of subtle things. There's a lot of Japanese hints and stuff, and that's, you know, comes into play. This issue, you already told me that you had to get a hold of Gray AI for a couple I of things. I did. I had to query the AI, and he had to query his wife to get some other yeah, answers. So we went, get we went deep on this one. Yes, yeah, so it went deep. So we start out with like this weird kind of flashback that looks more like a video being played, even with you have the kid that will get his name in this issue where you do end up seeing Sabasa being yeah, bullied. Very, and, very VHS looking. Yeah, like an that's old what tape. it looks like. I'm surprised you don't have like the time stamp there on it, <laughs> like the old VHS. But we do see our guy, and he's named Kagiyama in this, and he's sitting near Surge, who we ended yes, up seeing the last issue. I know like six words of Japanese because, you know, I watch the anime, but Kage means shadow. Yep. It so does. that one's Big that's got to be Demon a Slayer. That's where I kind of remembered oh, okay. you had Kagiyama as one of the characters as well. Uh, so I know it's yes. a ranking of kings. Okay. So that, and that's the thing we've been talking about who this might be. If you hear Shadow, you're going to think Shadow King, though, while that is, he's kind of a young guy. So it might just be the beginning of Prince. what will become. Yeah, Shadow Prince, Shadow Duke. Uh, because <laughs> I, I actually, when I went to look up and I'm like, you know, Kageyama, I know the Shadow deal, but yeah, oh, that means mountain. I was expecting it just to be Shadow King. And like, oh, it's, but, you know, you have the deal going and he's there sitting near Surge, who we find out is a bad girl. Oh, this. she certainly yeah, is. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. hanging out on the top of some big old building, which is probably the headquarters of the organization that we find out about later, I guess. They don't seem to like each other very much. Like, they know each other very well. Uh, she tries to get him to fix her phone, right? She's got electricity power, so it kind of makes sense that she'd burn out her phone a lot. But she does not respect him at all, and uh, and vice versa. Uh, he says to her later on, you don't work too hard this summer. And we say, see later on what her summer job is. Mm. It's, it's it's not it's nice. Yeah, even then we, you see she has this kind of scar. It looks more like, I don't know, varicose veins a bit if I would describe yeah. it, right? And you end up having like Kagiyama yeah, say like, oh, you have that, you know, just like, and, and mention psychers as well. And uh, she doesn't like that term, says I'm nothing like you. Mm-hmm. And when we get but to the end. it gives the idea that to him, like psychic type mutants or people are like old hat, they're a dime a dozen, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. unusual because. We don't know of very many in this universe. No. And later on, we're going to see there's, like you said, they might be on the top of this organization. This seems to be something their parents might be involved. And it starts to feel like Runaways again, in my mind, with a couple characters of the Runaways in here. But we'll talk about that when we get to it, obviously. But when he says, you know, I don't work too hard in quotes, I was like, oh, I think that he says she's lazy. Oh, no. No, she, mm-hmm. she does worse things. But then... We end up going to our main characters. Oh, and before they go, though, what's interesting here is that Serge asks Kageyama, they're looking at this video of uh, Hisako, you know, the video guy that posted around of her going into armor mode, and she says to him, you did this to her, didn't you? And he says, no, it wasn't me this time, which if it wasn't him who did that, then is there, a, we've kind of wondered, is there a second power trying to get to her? Are, these, are there multiple shadowy Man, type we'd things? we have to see affecting Hisako, and this really makes me think there are. Yeah, and he says, not me this time, but I do have some good secrets. And she's like, of her? Oh, my God, show me. Maybe one day. And he walks away. He's just being a jerk, too, with that. Uh, But we do even get Noriko as her name as well. So we're starting to get 
names for a bunch of the characters, a bunch of things going on. Which uh, is but, Surge's name in the 616. Yeah, so, yeah. So we, we get that. Really checks out. So it's clear. Right, exactly. It's the same. So we go to Hizuko's room, and you do have them having a bit of a seance kind of deal. You end up having Nico, who's going to try to commune with her little armor protection amulet. And I don't know. It seems like they're kind of like goofing around. I don't know that they expect to have all this happen. It seemed kind of a surprise to them when it does. But this shadowy figure is talking to her while this is happening. And she kind of zones out. And they end up saying, you know. It starts off like she's in a vision before it breaks into reality. And what's interesting is in that vision, she's talking to May Storm. But May's eyes have this symbol in them. It's an X, but with a spiral behind it. And we see later on that is the symbol of this very special organization that's connected to at least Ka- uh, Kageyama. Yeah, Kageyama. Kageyama. And so when it ends up saying is like, you know, although I'm to blame stirring up the darkness, kind of going with the deal. But it, it even seems like at that point in that vision, the, the word bubbles coming from May and the vision. It's very odd. And then she becomes like gooed up. But maybe that's a warning. Maybe it's something to go with like you said the eyes in that end up being the eyes of that symbol so it's it's very crazy with that and even then when she's there she's like somewhere i remember those eyes when she's even looking at what forms Mm. into that deal it's kind of scary uh but then they're gonna do this kind of seance type thing or a a mystical reading of whatever of the amulet and i I like this it's not i'm telling you a lot of people it's not straightforward it's a lot of things in this are kind of like symbolism that's kind of there you don't know what exactly is going on which is a problem at some points but i don't know i like this scene but you go with that yeah so this is the amulet that was originally given to hisako by subasa the passed away friend but it disappeared and then it was given back to her probably by the shadow so when they examine it, they see that X with a spiral symbol behind the little happy dude in the in the amulet. And I'm wondering, was that symbol always there or was that added by the shadow or the organization? And Nico also says she smells blood on it, and blood seems very important in this in this world. Like to become a mutant, there's like it's not just you have the gene, there's some sort of blood magical ritual that has to happen. So like for Hisako, Getting this amulet was a blood ritual. For May Storm, we remember, she didn't have her powers appear until she got scratched by Kageyama's yep, cat. by the cat. Yep, she mentions so it in this. So there's yep. blood involved all over, which makes me wonder, maybe it's something that the maker did to this universe to kind of tamp down on mutant powers, because he doesn't want any powers around. So I'm wondering if this blood magic is what has to be done to overcome what the maker did to let these mutant powers appear at all and it might be and it may be that it's a more powerful magic something that does you know supersede what the maker did and maybe something that's tied to japanese folklore because it seems like i mean at least this book's just in japan so we seem to have these and then maybe it'll spread i don't know but it's pretty cool and when you see that symbol like you you wonder if it was there or when like you said but you would have thought that hizuka would have even seen that at one point but i don't think she's really looked at the thing that hard because they seem surprised when she says there's a symbol behind there and then it like kind of starts bleeding it looks like and then kind of explodes with the goo and right, that's so where I think, yeah. I think the red that comes out has to do with that blood magic idea mm-hmm. yeah, that's what and I then uh, the shadow Kageyama I think doesn't want to be found out yet so I think this black goo coming out is him using his influence to kind of break up the seance okay not yet I'm not ready stop this yeah yeah, and it does break Nico's spyglass deal, her, her deal. And uh, she's like, oh, that shouldn't have. I, I actually like her. She's so calm when all this stuff is going on. But yeah, you end up where Kageyama kind of cuts off the deal when you have this shadow come out and they all see it. Now it's it's to everyone there. And you even have Nico again, really cool. It's like, be gone yeah, and hit with the It kind of gro- gro- grows up out of the amulets, I think. Because that, I guess that's, again, showing that he had some control over this amulet. And we've seen the shadow wants Hisako to join them, right? The idea that, oh, we're the mutants, we're kind of the same. They didn't say the mutants. You know, we have powers, we're the same. We should be running the world. So he's trying to recruit her, not just 
fight against yeah, her. Yeah, so. not fight against her. Yeah, it's, it's hmm. not there just to scare her. It's definitely the recruit, which becomes bigger when we continue on here and see that there is an organization with that symbol doing things like that. But he doesn't think she's ready or, or whatever the case may be, uh, thinks that it's not the time. But you do have this crazy, you know, shadow thing come out and goes after Nico at one point, but she ends up being able to kind of, I don't know, like hit it with purple goo type thing, whatever. It's it's very odd, but they, she doesn't know what she's doing. She mm-hmm. says, I don't know well, how I'm doing. The this. magnifying glass grows into a full-size staff, which it is the staff of one. It looks just like the staff of one from the six of six, six, 616. And when she smushes it down at first, uh, the kind of Japanese looking text there is Japanese. And it's the sound effect that means slam. I think it, the, the official translation is bachin, but slam. And then later on, when she has the, the book, book of magnifying glass, you see the really elaborate Japanese kanji text. Uh, Gray's wife says that means be gone, evil spirit, in kind of an elaborate, formal way. Okay, so it's it's nothing that you really need. It's not, but it kind of adds to it. I, I think that that's yeah. pretty cool. I tried to use Google and I think Translate. It's it failed. That. I, yeah, I tried yeah. I Google Lens. I tried. Yeah, that's what work, I had so, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but this is her, her saying that. This is her saying those words, and I guess it seems more formal and forceful to have it in this very elaborate looking kanji text. Yeah, it looks it's very elaborate. But yeah, uh, you have May and his go like I, you know, I Nico, I didn't know you could do that, and she's like, neither did I. And then starts talking about her grandmother. And and to say, the staff goes back down into a magnifying glass, and she's just kind of shocked as well. Then the uh, Alma Mori kind of drops cool from the thing. she gets cool again really yeah. quickly. Oh, she's yeah, not yeah. taken aback very long. She's calm and collected. Only that one second went, oh, did I do that? And now now she's cool again. Yeah, she's like Urkel for like a second. And then exactly. Comes like back and yes. says, my, my grandmother, she said, my grandmother gave me this. There's more to it than I thought. And in the 616, Nico was given the staff of one by her grandmother. So yeah, more that's parallels. cool. So it's more parallels. And then you have the Omamori kind of fall down into uh, his ghost hands. And she, you end up, Nico, explaining the pact made with blood. And so I've read about this in my grandmother's research. And so it's, you know, it is true. Oh, my God. And it's it's a cool scene. It doesn't do a ton. It's just interesting to me. And it puts out a lot of things. I like seeing the staff. Kind mm-hmm. of grow with that. It seems like when she didn't know anything about it, so that is something that was triggered in there when yeah. she got upset. And the idea of the blood magic and that this Omamori is connected to that X spiral group. Yep, yeah. So that's kind of crazy too. Uh, but then we go off to see Serge and see <laughs> what her, her summer job, job is. Yeah. yeah, her summer job is. Uh, you know, I guess it's more of a companion escort type deal? escort, escort i guess be. yeah a, a, a young this. girl who's an escort for older men yeah. mm. i mean the way she said i i hope that what she's saying here is they come and sit next to her and talk to her and then she tells them to skedaddle but who knows who knows because the guy does ask to touch that scar that she has and like i said that looks like varicose veins that's obviously connected to her power and mm-hmm. he's like, I won't hurt you. I'll be gentle. And she pretty much shocks the crap out yeah. of him. And it's then like steals a rent his a money. girlfriend situation. Yeah, I that's think what I think. I think she be. shocks the life out of him. I oh, think yeah, he I think is he's no dead. longer going concerned. Yep, I think he is dead. And uh, I think it is then like a she takes a out the contents of his wallet, which is apparently not very much. Yeah, I see some bills there, but she she just cheapskate and then walks away. And I'm like, I thought you were going to be a cool little girl there. And you are sus. You are a bad girl. Even though. All that is one thing, but when she's walking down the street and spits out her gum on a poster, yeah, oh my are goodness. we supposed to recognize that poster? No, it's, it, it's, it's a guy weird, with like right? a red butterfly mask. It looks like oh, it looks like an X Man whose name I can't think of. Okay, yeah. so it does look like that. It's weird that she just kind of spits the gum on it. There's a lot of things. I think there's a lot more layers to this than maybe we are aware of at first, but. Again, it, I don't know that I think a lot of people have bailed. I hope they haven't. Uh, but you end up where Serge walks by May and Nico and May's like, she looks like trouble, but not the fun kind. I'm like, you are correct. You oh, are that's fully Sunfire. Right. That's yeah, Sunfire. Okay, that's, that's Sunfire. Yeah, you're right. Yep. That's I recognize it now. Yeah. And I think that Sunfire is one of the guys who controls 
the region. So that's probably a picture of right, her as like, here's right. your leader type deal. So she's like really going against part of the, the maker's deal. council. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe so. And I think that that's, you know, that's pretty bad stuff being a bad girl spitting gum at that. Uh, but yeah, and then you have a conversation at the end between Nico and May. Well, then we go and also see Kageyama as they're talking about. The blood magic, the pack, that's where May's like, it, it doesn't seem like that's common knowledge because May says, oh, my God, is that how I got my powers? Because I ended up getting scratched by a cat. And that's it. And she's like, yeah, baby, you know, and talks yeah, about Nico the deal. has connections through her family, I guess, mostly her grandmother. that she's heard stories about this secret blood cult. And that's the shadowy organization, apparently, that. Kageyama belongs to. Yeah, and then we end up where you have and Shinobu is his name as well, Shinobu Kogiyama. And his mom's like, Come on, we have to go. And he's like, Yes, mother. And as a, it's a it's a good way to transition into this when talking about the blood cults, and I, I think that they might have these buildings that are hollow inside and they have this thing and we see it. And immediately when we see these people gathering, we see the symbol on the wall. You do see Kageyama amongst a bunch of people including yeah, and kids some of the and people adults look weird like the kind of mutants who have different appearances which we haven't seen any physically different mutants in this world until now yeah and well the only thing we've seen is the flashback in the ultimates where they showed in the 60s and i i didn't love the way that they showed that but in this maybe some of the you know if you don't look Normal, you may be hiding underground. This may be part of that, but you end up getting a bunch of things mentioned here that would be like, oh my god, because you get Homo Superior mentioned. Yeah, so that's huge. This group, this the shadowy group, the blood cult group with the symbol, they call themselves Homo Superior, mm -hmm. which is a very almost a Magneto y kind a of Magneto term. thing. Yeah, it is. I, I was waiting, I thought they were going to have. A leader come out and I was like Oh we're going to get Magneto something crazy Like that but we don't quite get to that Not but, yet no yeah not yet we'll have to see And you know things are a little subverted But we see in this I think that Pichimoko is doing something in this As well where there are a lot of things Being shown that are parallel especially With Nico the idea of okay Like you said the staff And all of that from a grandmother that's The same we end up having surge so there Are those similarities so when you start saying Homo superior I kind of Get a little excited. You mentioned mutants a bunch here again. And yeah, you have this cult that thinks that they're the, the, the place to be. And with Kageyama, they're trying to seemingly recruit physical to something. It, it has to be this. So you think of Must what's be. going on. Yeah. yeah. And then you just end up where May starts getting all excited. And it's like, we're going to fight them. We're going to fight these Which people. Which is a, a quick jump. Yeah. To find all of this organization. She doesn't even know that. Kageyama, this guy that she knew from middle school. Actually, she, I guess she doesn't know them. Yeah, she's yeah. knew them from yep, middle, yeah, middle yeah. school. Oh, this group exists. Oh, we're going to have to fight them. We're going to have to have our own team. And here's where they start talking about for names of the team. And the name comes from because we've seen they don't do very well in school. So their tests have a bunch of X's on them for wrong answers. <laughs> Oh, I thought that was kind of cute. Uh, it's kind of uh, cute. Yeah. It's a little, th this whole thing going from the one page to the next, seeing this organization with the narration, this is the talking between May and uh, Nico. But you're right. It goes from like, oh, I just found out about this blood thing and there's a cult, Homo Superior. We have to fight They're them. They're our enemies X -Men. now. X-Men. I mean, it's that really exist. forced. Yeah. I, I think at this point, you know, we're, we're far enough in it, issue five. That there may be some editorial of like, listen, Peach, we, <laughs> get on we like it. what you're doing, but you have to start doing some things that people will get at least slightly excited about. How about you say X-Men? And she's like, OK, well, I'll put it at the end. And it feels so, so weird uh, when they say, it, but it's cool. Like you said, the X is for marking off wrong answers. That's kind of cool, even though I love it. Where May, May is a bit self-centered, where she's like. Well, you know, the X, and she's doing the X. Mm -hmm. It's just like all the things we get wrong, and we're bad. And Nico looks us, I I'm actually really good in school. Like, <laughs> I, it's kind of a funny deal. Like, all May thinks of as herself. But then she goes through X team. Well, X team? And then she keeps going, Secret Society, X Men. And that feels weird for two little girls to be sitting there it and does. saying X Men. And that's uh, where I think it was. We know they forced. have to get to X Men because that's the name of the book. But yeah, it is. That was a, a, a leap. Not so believable. It's a leap. I would have actually, for this point, maybe X Girls would be kind of a cool, cute little name. And then maybe they add a couple people and then change it. But you end up where 
You have Nico X-Men. I guess it sounds better than Team X-Team sounds pretty good. <laughs> uh, and then you end up, Maze, like you can invite Natsu and Mori too. Don't want to leave them out. Do they have powers? And then you end up having to be continued and seeing the characters there. And uh, yeah, I, I believe that they probably will. So yeah, we'll have well, to see the deal. And they're N- cute. Natsu too. is the one who wears the eye patch. Yep, that's and my And her, her name means Summer. So Scott Summer, Cyclops eye patch. That's, that's pretty obvious. And Maury, with the kind of a bunny hat like from Bob's Burgers, she's got to be Molly Hayes from the Runaways. And Molly from the Runaways wears all sorts of crazy, all sorts of crazy animal hats. Yeah, so yeah. that and all again, fits together. Nico, that fits in with her as well. So it is kind of cool. And when you do end up seeing uh, Natsu, she never seems very happy. She always seems sad. So I'm, I'm actually interested a lot to hear them and see them get involved in how they are. Yeah, uh, I was hoping th- to see more of them this issue. Yeah, we so only get this tiny little silent appearance on this last page. The problem with Maury is it reminds me so much of Louise from Bob's Burgess that if she doesn't act like that, I'll be very disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> like just a smart ass and, and stuff like that. But yeah, they're they're starting the X Men team, so people will be <laughs> excited, right? I, I'm telling you, the people who are still with the book, I think, really do like it. Me and you like it. Uh, people have bailed. I don't know what can happen to get them back, but. We're here to enjoy it well, with all the other people, right? Next issue is the finale of this first arc. So something big we expect is going to happen. Uh, so maybe that'll be enough to generate some buzz. Uh, it has been kind of slow. I mean, even in this issue, we don't even see the armor power happen at all. This is the first issue. We haven't seen it. Uh, and at the end where we had that little, oh, they're talking about the secret society and it goes over the secret society. That was really the first time that I thought that Peach Momoko had that really nice synergy the flow from one scene to the next so that's that's improved the other scenes are just kind of a thing happens and a thing happens and a thing happens so just the the mechanics of how the comic is being told is still kind of clunky but the art looks amazing especially i don't know if you're looking at the full resolution version right now it is and it's just the texture within the watercolors you can see the texture of the paper you can see the subtle changes and shading and color it looks so different from any other mainstream American comic book that it's it's really a joy to look at. So that's Yeah, fantastic. I like it. A lot of people who don't like the art, I think that just they don't like the style. It's fine. But I think the art's even getting better. Yeah, so much of, especially Marvel, so many Marvel books all look the same, like slightly better or slightly worse versions of Ohio style. And this is really different, and I enjoy it. Yeah, but it's different. It's cool. Uh, what would you give it? Uh, I, I'm enjoying this. I like the characters. It's still kind of dragon, still has some technical flowing issues that I think are getting better. But yeah, I'm, I'm on board. I'm at a 7.5 out of 10. I'm actually an 8. Mm-hmm. I, I actually liked it a little more, just slightly more than you. But yeah, I, just to mention, I, I like to mention a homo superior more than how they forced an X-Men. Mm-hmm. But I did think that was a cute scene. I like May. May's my favorite character in it so far. I'm sure that at this point people she's have to be. She's Genki, Jim. She ganky. is. She's very Genki. And, uh, <laughs> How to get that in there for, 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 uh, for Greg. Yeah, for Greg. Also, it's weird. Natsu is probably my second favorite. We don't know anything. Never even. T- I don't think spoken a word. And <laughs> I just like her look. So we'll see. But I'm eight. You're a seven five. So better than last issue. Last issue we struggled a little with. So I think that it's starting to take off. I hope it continues. Me too. And finally giving us some some big things which you would think you would do at the end of a trade so we'll see uh yeah. next issue so that's the ending of something but if i can transition a little bit there's a beginning of something going on over on that other podcast on this podcast feed uh you know ruben and i are starting to talk about the beginnings of the from the ashes era we had the first issue of x-men number one come out this week so if you want to hear some more kind of x-men why not wander over there and check that out too 